After the epic tale of the ship static fire adapter, we told in the last video, got a little bit more easygoing video here for you today on a Saturday. We're going to kick it off with a Starbase summary looking at Booster 16 exiting the Mega Bay. It's going to come out of the left-hand side bay there. Of course, Booster 16 is the booster slated to fly on Flight 10. Coming up hopefully sooner rather than later. Got a little bit of a grid fin action there. They always rotate those grid fins. It makes it easier to see. It doesn't increase the clearance. I think that's always the discussion there. But uh, we're going to take Booster 16. We're going to drive it over. It's going to do its little pirouette between the... Oh, nope, wait. we got some work to do. Hang on. Got us in the lift up. There you go. I think they're removing a couple things there or covering them up or something like that. But we're going to pirouette between the two mega bays there and take it over to park it in the rocket garden. Doesn't seem too nefarious there, just sort of getting it out of the way so they can do some other things while they park it over that way. So here's the next move in the game of Starbase Chess. Booster 12 gets moved to Mega Bay 1, which, quite frankly, resulted in a significant amount of wailing and gnashing of teeth by Booster 12 fans. Of course, if you remember, Booster 12 was the first booster that was caught by the chopsticks. And sometimes we th see things parked over here in the Rocket Garden, and then they need more room. They take them into a bay, and then the cutting torches come out. So there was just like almost a straight-up riot in some of the uh, chats and comments and posts and stuff like that I was seeing going around. Please don't scrap Booster 12. It belongs in a museum slash Indiana Jones face or whatever. Uh, but we did see this sort of get moved around. <laughs> Look, I could be like, stay tuned to the end of the video to find out. Ah, we didn't see any cutting torches. I'm not going to do that to you. That's not how these videos are. Maybe that affects the performance. If I should like keep you on the hook and tell a story but not actually tell you how it works out, that's not why you're here. You're just interested in what's going on at Starbase. So uh, we did not see the cutting torches come out. God, look at this old little crinkly bits there on the bottom of the chines. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this does end up in a museum somewhere or displayed a gate guardian, something like that. Uh, I think that's everyone's hope for the historic, I guess you could say, booster that was first caught by the chopsticks. Especially one day flying a thousand of these things and it's just a regular bog standard thing for this to happen. To have the first one somewhere is kind of cool. We're going to check in really quick with the Gigabay Foundations. They've been continuing to dig out. You know, it's, it's construction experts will correct me on this one. Uh, the footings, right? You can see all the rebar there. And you've, you've seen HGTV. They put the big pier in the piers in the ground, right? But then they built a the little frame and they put the uh, concrete pour around it. And it sort of looks like that's what's happening here. But uh, I will let the more construction-minded amongst this. I've never poured a foundation for the hugest building ever, second hugest building, whichever one it is. Uh, so I'll let y'all fill that in. There in the background, that's the HLS nose cone. It's almost like a uh, like a bar and grill. <laughs> Not really. It's it's just been back there forever. It has electric. It has, I think, air conditioning and stuff like that. What's inside of it? Well, they've never allowed us to go inside and take pictures. There's been some leaked photos out there, but it's just there with the sun in the background. Over here, checking back in on pad one, reinstalling some of the propellant lines as we fully expect another ship to end up out here ship adapter stands already reinstalled there in the olm but instead of taking all this work apart they're redoing it they're preparing it to hook up to another ship and uh, get some more testing done the expectation there is that ship 37 is going to come back and have some amount of testing done stay tuned next week we will see exactly what they do a little bit of a Ambient shot here. Cryo tankers backed up. Wind, not a lot of wind there, right? But the vapors are just sort of like going along smoothly. This is all normal, by the way. Like you see, it looks, gosh, it's a huge leak, that thing. No, when they're pumping the propellants off of those things, uh, that is perfectly normal to see them outgas, release, vent like that. So this is across the street here. This is across the street from Pad 1. This is the air separation plant that we've been hearing a little bit about. Of course, a long time air question as to whether or not SpaceX would create their own propellants 
out to there, and there are some important propellants, uh, propellants uh, gases that they need just in the regular atmosphere. So if you've got enough power and you've got a place to put the ground, you can actually uh, process just air and get components out of the air, like nitrogen and oxygen and that sort of stuff, right? So we'll see how that goes, but uh, here is an awesome shot. Caesar uh, turning the camera around and catching Starhopper there. That one actually ended up in the print shop, if you want that hopper shot. That is one that we have over at shop.nestspacefly.com. I ah, put a little tag up there or something. So, uh, the, the foreshadowing here, where I wasn't trying to make you stick around for the video, here's Booster 12 going into Mega Bay 1, but our subsequent uh, watch on what was happening in there didn't, in, didn't involve any deconstruction. They weren't scrapping that thing out. Gonna move back around. You can actually see some of those piles that have been driven in to hold back the edges of the hole that they've dug there. Uh, is that... Oh, dump truck to the face suddenly. Uh, is that scaffolding? That actually looks like a safety railing that they have around the outside there. Here's some Star Factory window cleaning. What I'd like to know is when Optimus robots are going to be doing this. Uh, they can pour drinks. They can walk around parties. When will they be able to be on a lift? And I guess the big question is, is an Optimus robot really the right form factor? Wait a second. The right form factor to be out there doing work. Speaking of a magnificent form factor, to, being in, to, to be in the field doing work, uh, that's Dan. <laughs> he was over there working on the cameras and uh, stood in front of one to show off his nice sun shirt. Uh, we really do appreciate Dan being out there. He does a ton of uh, electrical camera work and stuff like that for us. Popping back over to the second pad, here is that booster quick disconnect. Remember, there's two of them here on pad two. Man, that looks like the end of the day. Those guys are going down those stairs like they are just done working out there. Not in a huge hurry. I know how that must feel. Here we've got a little bit of uh, work on the ridge shoulder cap, the interface where the ridge that will split the exhaust stream coming from the bottom of the booster in twain, uh, going off into two directions here. But the point where that sort of attaches to the sides of the flame trench, getting some work done there. Here's a flame trench wall section being installed. This actually looks like some armor plating on top of the edge there. Oh, we're gonna zoom in. What are we getting? Propellant lines. A lot. Of, oh, there you go. You can see it actually going up uh, out of the top of the temporary ship propellant lines there. A little tough to see. That heat haze is no joke. Of course, the heat haze is why the workers uh, go down the scaffolding stairs like molasses at the end of the day. Watch, that was like the beginning of the day. I don't know. I didn't have a clock. I didn't ask the guy. He just looked tired. So here's another interesting thing. Uh, this is SN2. If I read the label correctly there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's SN2. Uh, weird, because it's been sitting there for years. It's one of the early, early test tanks. Uh, it's actually on a concrete base. And this is one of the early things that we caught in testing out there. Why was it just sitting around? I, where is it going to go? Right now it's just driving around Sanchez. Uh, it sort of moved over to another position there. But I guess I'll be curious. It's just weird we haven't seen that thing move anywhere in multiple years. My, my notes that they gave me, they give me notes sometimes, said it's been uh, what, 2022. Over three years since that thing has moved, budged a bit. So... We'll be curious to see what's going on there. Is it going to come apart? Is it going to go somewhere? They have some use for it. We'll see. A little bit of a sunset shot over here at pad one. I guess I guess you just know that's a sunset shot. Because if you're looking at the open chopsticks like that and the tower's behind the pad, you're looking west. The road is behind you. The beach is behind you. The waves are behind you. Uh, so that's the sun going down in that direction. What in the heck? Are they opening a wine bar? On the top of the launch mount, what are those Timu lights that they've got strung around there? They don't seem to particularly provide any effective illumination for operations. Are they decorative? Are they regulatory compliance? I think I would doubt that. It looks like somebody's going to have a wedding up there. I don't know. Hopefully that doesn't end up the title of this video. <laughs> it looks like they're going to have a wedding up there. Uh, that's always hard. I, I really don't understand the purpose of those little lights. Weird. Help me out on this one. I'm normally pretty creative and or full of it. I've been accused of both. And I'm not 
sure what is go- <laughs> the sun's going down the lights are getting brighter what's going on there uh, humor me in the comments with your best guesses as to why the LED light ropes were installed on the outside of the chip adapter I I do not know it is not often that I find myself in one of these videos where I don't know what to tell you about something or at least make up something and uh, that one there y'all help me out a little bit of a silhouette shot of pads one and two here. We got some beach grasses blowing in the foreground, waving gently in the foreground. Told y'all this was going to be a little bit more laid back of a video here today. Hope you're enjoying your Saturdays or your Sunday mornings if you're getting this in the morning. As always, appreciate y'all watch out. If you want to support what the photographers do out there, we'll put a link to the uh, these shots of Hopper here. It's just another cool way to support what they do. You get a cool poster or something for your wall. Cost a couple bucks. We appreciate y'all hanging out with us. Thanks for watching. We will see you nerds later.